Well, it's not uncommon at BYU to find siblings playing on the same team, but rarely do you find that a father started a legacy and his sons chose to carry it on. Take a look at the reign of the Arrhenius family. In the throwing world at BYU, the name Arrhenius is synonymous with greatness. It all started back in the 60s when a young man in Sweden met a BYU athletic trainer. I, I got a track scholarship from BYU uh, and uh, I had finished my military service, which was mandatory at the time in Sweden. So I had nothing else to do. So I just got an offer and I took it. During his time as an athlete at BYU, he started a legacy that his sons would carry on. I guess I was all American. They make a big deal of that, you know. So. All three of Anders' sons competed as throwers at BYU after learning the skills of their father. Well, I, I always believed that uh, if a parent had been good at anything, it doesn't have to be athletic. It can be music or uh, art or whatever. Give it a shot. Teach your children. If they like it, it's fine. If they don't, it's fine too. So they, they played all the sports football, basketball, and baseball. And, and then when they were around 10, 12 years old, I start introduce them to track. And uh, it was really easy for them. I think that's one of the reasons why we succeeded so much is because we had someone there all the time, you know, telling us what to do, telling us what not to do, coaching us. So I think that helped us out a lot compared to other kids that didn't have that. It's also, I mean, allowed us to spend a lot of time with our dads. Um, you know, quality time, and we've gotten really close and stuff like that. So. We knew when we were doing something wrong, but he made sure to praise us when we were doing something right and made sure that we were always having fun and always loving it. You know, if he, if he could tell that we weren't enjoying it, he just said, all right, we'll just stop then. When you're ready to, you know, when ready to go back and, and throw and enjoy it, then come back, so. Anders and his sons would go on to spend time competing on middle and high school track teams. When summer rolled around, it was back to the motherland. So track, track and field in, in uh, Europe or Scandinavia is a big time sport. It's really big. We can feel when we have to meet Sweden, Finland, it's 50,000 people. So track means more over than it does there. Did you feel like you were missing out on like just a kind of a kickback, lazy summer with your friends? Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> or sometimes you're over there and you're frustrated. You, you think I'd rather be home in, in Utah, especially if it's, it's just a rainy summer in Sweden. You'd rather come back to the heat, but I mean, in some, but I think in other ways it helped us grow. Being, you know, tra traveling around the world, like I said, being in a different culture, being in a different environment. I, I think, you know, we might have missed out on some of the you know, the summer fun, but we, get, we had other experiences to make up for. All those years of hard work and year-round training paid off. Both Leif and Nicholas were named collegiate All-Americans, just like their father. Now they keep a tally of who holds the record in the different throws. Yeah, my dad has the shot put record, I have the discus record, Leif has the hammer record. I do have the javelin record, barely. <laughs> it doesn't count. It doesn't count, because we, we don't really throw, throw the javelin, but I still feel the javelin the farthest. Um, and lifting, my dad still has quite a few of the records, but I mean, that was a, the 70s. There were different times back then. In my prime, yeah, I would have killed them. <laughs> no, they are better than I was. No. But, yeah, they both are. Uh, how does your PR rank with their PR? I, I still have the best PR in the shop by one centimeter. Oh, no. <laughs> That's that much. And, and, uh, Niklas is behind me, and Leif, he can do it maybe if he eats more Wheaties. That one centimeter is still a bit of a sore spot for Nick. I remember the measurement coming up, and it, and it you know, read 19 meters 91, and I remember being like, I mean, it was a huge PR for me. I broke my PR by like three feet when I threw that throw, and I remember being so excited, and then I remember being like, wait, what's my dad's PR? And I remember being like, 1992, I'm like, oh. So, I mean, it, it, was, it was fun for him. I mean, it was, I'm, I mean, I'm glad I threw the throw, but I remember when it came up, just thinking, oh my gosh, I'm only one centimeter away. Make sure you tune in next week as we show you part two of the Arrhenius story. We'll talk to Nick about his recent experience at the Olympics in Beijing.